Today we're checking out the Bauer 20 volt lithium seven and a quarter inch sliding miter saw. This is a relatively newer tool at Harbor Freight. Um, as you can see, I've already pretty heavily invested in the Bauer 20 volt line. Um, so when I saw this come out, I was pretty intrigued. I uh, needed a new miter saw. I had the Warrior 12 inch miter saw, uh, but it was just <laughs> really too, too much of a machine for my purposes. That's probably more of a professional style miter saw than I really needed. I'm just a DIY homeowner maker and I kind of have a very small uh, shop space here. Um, this workbench is only uh, 30 inches deep. So I wanted something that was a little bit smaller, more portable, more manageable. And uh, since I was already invested in the Bauer ecosystem, this seemed like it would be a pretty good fit. So I decided to pick it up. It was $199 retail. Um, I believe I got it for $149 or $159 with a coupon. Um, for a miter saw this size is not uh, a terrible deal. Um, but considering um, the features and the interoperability um, with my other tools, uh, the portability is awesome. Uh, you know, it was a no brainer for me. Uh, as you can see with my small workspace, even with this being a sliding miter saw, it still fits pretty well in my small space. It's nice and portable. Um, it's pretty well constructed. I'm uh, sure that the um, surface here is aluminum, not you know, cast iron or anything. So it's relative, relatively light, um, takes seven and a quarter inch blades. I'm just using the 20 or 24 inch Bauer, or not 20 or 24 inch, 20 or 24 tooth Bauer, you know, standard blade. That was, you know, less than 10 bucks. Um, pretty much all the stuff that I make, I make just kind of DIY projects and basic things and small craft projects and such. Um, like this workbench is all two by three construction. So, you know, this is perfect amount of machine for my needs. So this is a sliding miter saw. It's a single bevel. So it only tilts 45 degrees to the left, not uh, both left and right, just to the left. Um, it also goes 45 degrees side to side, has a nice, I don't have this locked down to the bench, so it's gonna slide on me, but, um, so it has nice kind of ratcheting locks into the major degrees, 45, 31.6, 22 and a half, um, or you can fine tune it and then lock it down. It has a lock for the slide and then it has the bevel lock that allows it to, oops, I have the clamp in the way, and allows it to tip 45 degrees this way. So that's a nice big knob in the back. Um, other major, major features of the saw, it has a nice removable clamp for holding your work down. Um, it has a dust collection bag, which is removable. And you can plug a shop vac, such as my Bauer, 20 volt, three and a half gallon wet dry vac. It works reasonably well. I'll give you a little demo here in a second. Um, so the dust collection goes through here. The blade is fairly easy to install and change. You just, um, with the battery removed always, pull the clear plastic guard back. You loosen this screw. It doesn't fully remove, but you loosen the screw and this guard will 
uh, be a little bit free, which gives you better access to the nut that holds the blade on. You remove the nut and the washer and such. You put the blade on and you cinch it back up, lower the guard, put the screw back in, and you're golden. The uh, nut that holds the blade on is reverse threaded. Um, all the info on changing blades is in the manual. Um, one other thing that you'll probably want to do when you get the saw is uh, calibrate it. Um, out of the box, this came pretty well calibrated. The only thing that I really had to, um, that I, well, I still have to um, calibrate is the um, bevel here. It's at zero right now, but it's kind of just a hair off there. So, um, you know, with the square and, and uh, everything, you can kind of adjust the angle and then dial this by loosening the screw and moving this and get it all calibrated nicely. You can also, and all the calibration stuff is in the manual as well, but you can remove these bolts and um, make sure that the fence is all calibrated to square 90 degrees as well. Um, back here you have the Allen wrench slash screwdriver for putting the blade on. That just houses right back in there. Um, this little pin here um, with the saw down, this pin holds the saw in the down position for transport, for safety. Um, obviously I always have the battery removed and the saw down um, while it's stored here in my garage. Um, but then you kind of hold the saw down, pull the pin, and the saw goes back into position. Um, spindle lock for holding the arbor while you're putting the blade on. Um, safety switch before you pull the trigger to turn the saw on. Um, and then it has like a little st adjustable stop um, for if you want to hold the blade to not go all the way down. Um, beyond that, I think that's the nuts and bolts tour of everything on the saw, except for, let's put the battery back in there. It goes right back there. This is essentially just like their circular saw on a miter saw chassis. Um, here you have your switch for the LED light. Now this is my favorite part of this saw. On my Warrior 12 inch saw, it had a laser for a guide. And the laser out of the box was, you know, wi pretty wildly inaccurate. Um, there was a lot of tutorials online about how to get the laser adjusted to be accurate. This has a shadow line instead. So when you get the saw blade down close, you see that the light against the saw blade creates a pretty defined shadow, not only on the top of the work, but on the side. And that, out of the box, is pretty darn accurate in my tests so far. I've been using this for about a month, and it's been both great and very accurate. So I'm really, really loving that part of it. So power-wise, what are we talking about here? Well, it's not gonna be, like I said, you know, a job site or a fine furniture building saw. It's a good DIY homeowner option. Um, that said, it is pretty powerful for what it is. Um, they recommend with pretty much all the Bauer tools that you use a three amp hour or higher battery. And that's the same for the saw. I would recommend that you use a five amp hour or an eight amp hour battery for best results and also longevity. Now, this past weekend was my biggest test with this saw. I built this workbench and this is all basic two by three construction, pretty basic, all 90 degree cuts. But I was using it all day and at the end of the day, I still had pretty much the whole battery um, using the gauge on the battery, the whole battery left. So 
it was pretty powerful. I had no problems whatsoever as far as losing power or anything. And it had quite a bit of power left in my battery. So, you know, if you get a bigger battery, you get your power and you get the longevity of use throughout the day. Um, the thing I love about these tools being portable is I can also have a bunch of batteries and just swap them out and continue going on my way with all my different tools throughout the day. And they last a pretty dang long time. So having this in a saw is really cool. This being such a small footprint, I can pretty much put it anywhere. I don't have to take it with a big stand, a dedicated stand or anything. I can put it on pretty much any surface and use it. And it is, you know, it works beautifully. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just kind of show it in action so you can kind of see what it's like in use. Um, I'm going to plug my Bauer shop vac in here. Now, the Bauer shop vac, the portable one, not the wheeled one, um, is okay. It's not the most powerful, so it's not the greatest for um, dust collection for this unit. Um, there's gonna be a little bit of sawdust left on the table after you use it, but it takes, I would say, 75% of the dust intake into the vacuum. So that'll keep your workspace a lot cleaner. It's not gonna be totally dust-free, but you know, managing expectations. Having this whole system with you know, this being highly portable and this being highly portable is awesome, I think. So let's clamp this two by three right in here. And I'm just gonna make sure that I have the bevel locked down and everything, and this is locked down. All right, so I'm gonna turn the shop vac on. And I have my safety. So just a basic cut. Um, here, I'll just uh, use the blade without the vacuum so you can see how loud it is. So it's not terribly loud. Um, it's got a nice, pleasant, steady whirring sound. Um, but better than anything, it's got a nice, uh, I don't know if it's an electronic brake or what you would call it, but it's got a nice blade stop on it. Um, of all the saws that I've owned throughout the years, and I've owned pretty much exclusively cheap saws. This is the first one with a break on it, which I very much appreciate. Um, let's take a look at the cut. It's nice and smooth. Um, just a tiny bit of, um, I wouldn't say chip out, but just a little bit of Know, wood fiber hairs on the back of it, but overall it's nice and smooth and clean. Um, I haven't calibrated this totally yet, so I can't really say um, how close to 90 it is, but um, so far the um, tipping bevel is just maybe a degree off, but this seemed to be pretty locked on 90 as long as I had this set to um, zero. Um, so I like the cut, it's nice and smooth and clean the way I like it. So I could do, it's not, I'm not going to make fine furniture with this, but it's, you know, a, a really nice cutting blade and you can get better blades for this if you want. I'm just using the real basic one. Um, but as you can tell, you do have a little bit of sawdust left. It gets, you know, the majority of the dust in here it's quite a lot and I do have to I really have to <laughs> clean my filter here um, but but yeah it's much better than just leaving it out there and actually surprisingly compared to other 
inexpensive saws that I've used, the dust collector bag on this does a really good job. Um, I've had miter saws in the past with a dust collector bag that I've used for years and left the bag on it the whole time and <laughs> it's barely dusty whatsoever. This one actually collected a fair amount of dust um, right out of the box. So overall, I would have to say my impression of the Bauer sliding miter saw is, you know, a good 10 out of 10. I mean, you know, I have a small workspace here and I can get quite a lot of sliding action on it. Um, it does feel very well made. The chassis is nice and uh, metal and solid. The saw part itself is probably about what you expect from, you know, if you own their circular saw, um, but it's pretty, pretty darn powerful for its size and price. And, you know, I'm very impressed. Um, aside from having to, you know, do a little bit of calibration out of the box, perhaps, um, it should be pretty darn ready to go. I think installing the blade and the dust bag is really the only thing that I had to do to it. So I would give this definitely a nine out of 10. I would definitely recommend it for DIYers, homeowners, um, people with small shops, people that need something small and portable. Um, you know, pairing it with a portable shop vac is a great, you know, go anywhere set of uh, tools for doing a lot of cutting. So yeah, I would definitely, definitely recommend this. So let me know what you think. Did you grab one of these? Are you planning on grabbing one of these? Um, ask me any questions you may have about this in the comments below and I'd be happy to answer them. Um, I might have some more Bauer tool demos in the near future, um, but be sure and uh, stay tuned for more to come and we will see you on the next one. Thank you for watching. Okay.